Hi, I'm Mark. Welcome back to Foothill Paint Fabrication. Well, today we're on Project Ruby and we're fixing a screw up I did way back before the car was stripped when I put this quarter panel on. Um, at the time, I had uh, the door adjusted where I thought it should be and obviously I didn't. Um, it, I made it line up perfectly, but I think the front of the door was too far in, which cantilevered the back lip out and then I matched the quarter panel to it. I went by the body manual, I measured the other side, I did everything I could, and it's still not right. So I can't leave it, it has to be fixed correctly. And I wasn't even gonna shoot a video on this, I was just gonna do it off camera, but I thought, you know what, there's a lot of guys out there may have, uh, even if they didn't put a new quarter panel on, I've seen a lot of older cars with the quarter panels and the doors just don't look right. So you may need to do something very similar to this. So let's jump in, look at my screw up, and then we're gonna just get right to it and uh, start start cutting and fixing it. Okay, first things first, I've got a spacer on here so the door closes to the same depth every time. The door is adjusted where it's gonna be in paint. So uh, that's it, and that door ain't coming off until this quarter panel matches the door. I've got some work I need to do to the door and it needs to come off. You can see those lines there. That, that lip kind of rolls in at the very end. It needs to be um, dollied out, but I can't get to it till the door comes off. But like I said, it ain't coming off until we get this right. So you can see the problem right here, if I get in tight. So you can see that uh, that doesn't line up well and we have the edge of this door looking really sweet after the other work we did to it. So what I think I'm gonna do is uh, I won't cut it loose at the top and I won't cut it loose at the bottom. What we'll do is we'll open the door, I'll put some chalk marks on here, we'll figure out where our cuts need to be and we'll cut inside the door jam and put a kerf and since that needs to go in, hopefully the kerf will be wide enough and then we'll just simply push on it, tack it, push on it, tack it until it matches the door. And then we'll just keep opening and closing the door, uh, you know, double checking and then once we get tacked enough and in the right spot, then we can full weld it. Now up here, this does not line up. This is actually too far in where the rest of it's too far out. So once we get that worked out down here, I think we'll cut my TIG brazing off that I did not too long ago, cut a little bit down the edge, and then we're gonna pry that out and then re-weld it, and then these will line up really nice. So got a little bit of going, well, a lot of going in, a little bit of coming out. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and map this out and figure out where to make our cuts. Okay, let's go ahead and check this out. So it looks about flush right here, but that's really close. So I think I may need to cut this loose anyways, just so we could push that in, get it tacked, and then we can pry that out because these radiuses don't feel the same right here. So we may have to go ahead and cut that all the way loose, but that's no big deal. So what I want to do is come through here and just kind of sight down here. I'm going to sight down the uh, side and see how much. And my chalk line will be long, uh, short for a little bit, and long for a lot. So let's say it's only out just a little bit. I'll put a short chalk line, and if it... Uh, if it's more, then the chalk lines are going to start getting longer. That's a little bit longer there. So I'm just going to keep going down doing this and then all the way to the bottom and then we're going to get the door open and then we're going to figure out exactly where we can make our cut in there so it's easy to weld, easy to grind and uh, you know, really nothing to worry about. We're not going to mess with the outer skin. The deeper I go inside there, the less chance of warping this outer skin with heat. So we're going to try to find a spot that's in there as far as we can. We might not be able to, but uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and get this marked out and cut. All right, I've been sitting here looking at this for a little while. And uh, here's the original seam right here. Right up here, it goes right along. That's the weld Dave did for me. It goes all the way down, all the way around down over to here and then it just went straight down and then that this whole piece went on so all I had it was a seam right there. So uh, I was considering cutting down inside here. Now there is a brace on the other side because remember this quarter panel came off a hard top with no post so they had extra bracing. I just cut away some of it. I still left it down and so it's spot welded right behind here which could be a problem. 
Also welding right here could put a little heat into the skin out here and warp it. Um, and um, I think I'm a little more comfortable coming right off here and just recutting basically right on top of that old weld and just cutting all the way down, come right down through here, come to this point, and then just simply go over at an angle over to here, right here, staying away from that brazing because I won't be able to uh, weld right through that brazing. I think that's, uh, I think that's what I want to do. So I'll grab a Sharpie. I'm going to mark it out. We'll, uh, I'm not sure how I want to cut it. If I want to use a cutoff wheel or if I want to use the, the little reciprocating saw, but let me get it marked first and then we'll come back and start cutting. All right, let's get to cutting. Okay, that's loose right here. I'm gonna finish cutting the bottom and, uh, and then we'll see where we're at, see if we've got enough kerf to actually pull this in where we need to go. But it's moving up here. All right, we're getting there little by little. All right, that should do it. Let's see if it moves. Okay, we are getting movement. You can see the quarter panel moving in and out. I don't know if you guys can see it, but I can. So the kerf did close up a little bit in a few spots. So we are probably, uh, you know, I put the lines out here where I needed more movement. And I'm, so I'm probably gonna have to open that up a little bit, but it is moving in. So I'm gonna close the door, push on out here and see if we can get it to line up. If not, I'll make little notes and chalk out here that we need to widen the kerf up at those spots so we have enough give. And then, uh, yeah, then we'll figure out you know, some way of pushing out here with the door open, we can put a tack just slowly, little by little, uh, you know, inch our way down till this thing lines up out there. All right, I don't know how well you guys can see, but if I put this speed square on here and just put a little pressure on it, I can see the gap closing right here, but not near enough. So obviously we need to open that kerf up a lot more on the inside. So I'm gonna go and do that off camera. Well, I'm just gonna go along here and push and figure out how much we need. I'll just make a little note, you know, and then uh, I'll just get the cutoff wheel in there and widen that kerf up so we can push in and get this to match up with the door. All right, when we started, I had a couple of chalk marks up here, but once I made the cut, that actually pulled in, and so now the door fits perfectly right through here, so I wiped those off, but we still have some down through here, so I use those kind of like a gauge, and so we got a pretty good little kerf right here but it's really hard uh, with the door shut to push on that without denting the uh, quarter panel. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put an F clamp right here and just clamp it and pull that curve shut, take the TIG welder and just tack it and then close the door. I'm hoping, as you can see by these marks, see how they're kinda big and then they get smaller and smaller and then of course it's touching, it's up there, perfect. I'm coming hoping, since I cut the kerf bigger here and then kind of tapered it to match those lines, that once I pull this in, then we close the door and it's all going to line up. Then all I have to do is tack it and then weld it, but uh, I'm rarely that lucky. So let me get an F clamp on here. We'll get the TIG weller over here and uh, pull that kerf completely shut and then get it tacked, then pull it out of the way, close the door and see how we're looking. See if she stays. All right, this opened up here a little bit, but we'll see if it fits down here and then we'll just keep doing that. If that's not far enough, then we'll cut that, open the curve some more and just keep doing that. Really wanna work from the bottom up since uh, the gap is bigger down here or we need to move it more down here and just work our way up. And the panel will get slightly taller as we climb. So let's close the door and see how we did. Okay, much better, but we're not there yet. And it's about the same. It just slowly fades away as we go up. So I think we're looking pretty good. 
All we need to do is open that kerf up some more, pull that in tighter, and put a tack on it. All right, we're looking really good. Now, I did have to do that two more times in the same exact spot, so it wasn't enough. So I ground the kerf on each side of that tack weld, and then I put a clamp to hold it, then I cut through the tack weld to widen the kerf at that spot. Um, and I just, and I tried it again, then I had to do it again, and now we are looking very good right here. Look at this. Look at that. And remember I was saying I was hoping I could just hold it with that one tack and it would be perfect all the way up here? Well, i usually not that lucky and today I got that lucky. So it's looking really good, really good. So I think the next step is to uh, just inch my way up, do another little spot well, I mean a little tack, a little tack and keep checking it, make sure it's not moving and just kind of inch my way up. And then we're gonna have to address the top here and then we're gonna have to address the bottom. Now I did cut that back over and it may, I may not have had to do that, but what it did, it would allow the whole panel to move together. I could have forced it probably, but you have to be careful not to force these panels too much. Sure, I had to use a clamp to pull that in, but it, it didn't take a lot of pressure to pull it together. But if you pull it really hard and then you park it out in the sun when the car's all done, what you'll get is ghost waves in it. And that's, it, it can happen from media blasting, uh, you know, really pushing on a panel and then it gets hot sitting out in the sun when you're all done, it's super shiny. And then you see a wave or a wrinkle or something that you never saw before. And that's because that sheet metal's getting hot and it's trying to return back to its natural state. So just to try to get them to lay where they should be instead of forcing them in. All right, I'm gonna get, a, uh, get some more tacks on the way up here and then we'll come back and take a look how it's going. All right, we're getting there. We're uh, right here. If you guys look right here, now I'm actually prying this away. So I'm pulling this out so it matches. And then as we get back up here, then we're gonna go back in and then we're gonna go back out again just to get this thing to fit that door perfectly. But uh, we're making some good headway. Trying to get this flush is the, probably the most difficult part, you know, here, get it in the right dimension and then get it flush this way to get it tacked. So it's looking really good. I'm just gonna keep, uh, keep at it and hopefully we'll get up to the top pretty soon. All right, let's see where we're at here. We got all the way to the top and all the way to the bottom. Uh, now you notice kind of a big gap here. I've tried to weld that in just a little bit on my tacks. So I had to put the saw blade back in there a couple more times to open that kerf up because remember we had to push this over and it was bottoming out right in here. So I had to cut that open so I could push it over. Um, and then once we got it tacked where we needed it here, then I had to start uh, pulling it back to get this piece to line up with the door and that left a gap. It's no big deal We'll weld that in I'll TIG braze that gap in just like they did at the factory So this gap here is right. This is lining up with the door and it's lining up beautifully along here So I got that down there. I did some uh, full welding right in this area and then it's tacked up inside there So what I really want to do right now is uh, I've ground a lot of my welds kind of smooth and I want to hammer and dolly this area right here because it's not quite as flush in a few spots it needs to be. So I need to hammer that out and uh, get that a lot smoother. And that's going to be a little difficult reaching inside there and holding a dolly, but uh, you know, I'll do what I can. Then we're going to be ready to clean up real well and do some full welding. Well, it's kind of hard to reach. I had to fish the handle up through this hole here and I just need to work this spot right here just a little bit. So we're, we're going to see what we can do. Coming up a little, I think we're going to ultimately need a little bit of body filler right here. I can't quite seem to get this area to push out. Yeah, it's coming out a little. I'm going to work it a little bit more and then we're going to get this cleaned up and uh, get some welding done, get it ground smooth. All right, guys, we are looking really good here. I'm really happy with the results so far. There's one spot that I'm not happy about, but it looks like it's in the stamp. If you guys can see right here. Now that is a little more kind of rolled. The rest of the uh, panel is more of a sharper break over and the other side is the same way. It's nice and clean like this right here. This one kind of bubbles around the corner. So I think we're gonna have to do a little 
little tapping on that to get that down so it matches the door better. Um, you can kind of see it really is kind of raised up right here. And that's how it was, you know, on the other car before I cut it off. So I, I think I just need to tap that down and kind of square that corner up a little bit. But other than that, we are looking good. I'm going to go ahead and weld this and uh, I, I, I'm not going to show you guys any welding. I mean, you've seen me weld plenty. So we're just going to get this welded up, get it ground and, uh, and take a look at it, see how it turned out. Okay, got it welded, ground, sanded, and I even uh, TIG brazed the top and the bottom, just like the factory. So uh, we are done with all that crappy work, but look at this mess I've got here. There is stuff laying everywhere. I'm tripping over it. I gotta clean this up before I go any farther. But it came out nice. Got the little low spot right there. We talked about it. I was able, unable to hammer on that enough to get it out. Uh, there's a brace back there that uh, doubles the thickness, but it came out pretty nice. A little body filler, it'll be uh, beautiful. But uh, I'm really happy with the way it came out. Uh, let's close the door and check it out. So, if you look right along here. So much better. Not perfect at all, but really, really close. I mean, very close. So when we go to block out, there's not going to be much work, that's for sure. But it's looking really good. Now we need to address this thing right here. And if you look, this gap fattens up right there. And that's because this sheet metal needs to go that way and down. So let's go take a quick look at the other side. And then I'll show you what I want to do to this side. Okay, so I don't know if you guys can tell, but this right here is a lot sharper bend right in this spot. So it lays down in there like it's supposed to instead of kind of being bubbled up. And then the gap is a lot more parallel over here. That one right here kind of bubbles out right there. So what I want to do, I think, is somehow from the inside push out and then tap down right on here. So uh, let's head back over there. Let's see if we can figure that out. All right, we're going to keep this super simple. I got a piece of quarter by one. I've uh, ground like a chisel shape on the point here and then rounded that over to fit this radius on the inside. And now this is a lot rounder than this. It's not as a you know square corner. So I'm planning on slipping this up in there, hitting it with a hammer and just going back and forth, trying to drive that that way and square that up. And then I'm going to come back out here and tap on this, try to drive it down and just back and forth, back and forth. Ideal, I'd like to have some, a lot of pressure on that while I'm tapping out here, but without getting the porter power out and a whole big three hour thing, um, I think this is going to work. So I can't really get you inside there with me. So I'm just going to do a little tap in, then we'll come out here and see if we can drive this down, to match that door. Okay. I was very careful tapping that way. I didn't want to make a bunch of dents in that uh, body line. So we're just going to go ahead and take this. This is one of my, um, PDR tools. It's just like hard plastic and I've, uh, filed the end really flat and we're just going to go along here and tap down on this and hopefully we can get this down. So I'm going to be kind of looking in the camera uh, monitor to see how I'm doing. Does that look any better? I don't know. I think we need a lot more right here. There's a ridge right there. I can see it. So I need to hit that a lot harder. I think I need to drive the sheet metal this way and push that back out. I need to get rid of some of the sheet metal. But it does look better. I'm going to go a little bit more. We get, we're going a little bit right here. All right, I'm going to um, kind of keep at this. I'm going to go inside and try to drive it that way. And then we're going to try to get that dent out. Uh, hopefully it'll pop out. If we have to put a little filler there, it's not the end of the world. But getting this ridge down right here is very important. So these have a nice hard surface that bridges perfectly over the both of them. All right, I'll bring you back in a minute. All right, guys, I think we've got it. It looks pretty good. 
I can't get the camera down low enough, so well, maybe you guys can see right there. It came out pretty nicely. Uh, driving that that way, it did improve this gap a little bit, but not uh, you know not all the way. And this radius still isn't quite the same as uh, the other part of it. So it will take some body filler here. We do have a little low spot right here. Um, I'm going to try to spoon that out later. I got to figure out some way of get something in there to you know kind of spoon that back up and try to get that out so we can lessen the amount of body filler we're going to need. We will need body filler right here to get these, you know, all perfect when we're blocking out. But uh, it looks really good. And uh, we got the quarter panel back where it belongs, you know, kind of fixed my mistake. You know, second time's the charm, I guess, on this one, huh? But it came out really nice, really happy to get this uh, done and uh, be able to move forward. Okay guys, that pretty much wraps up this video on fixing my mistake. Now, uh, we fixed a lot of factory mistakes on other parts of the car. This time we're fixing a mark mistake. And uh, I can tell you from experience that I've made the uh, you know, error of uh, actually just, oh, that's good enough. It's not gonna show that much. And then when the car's all done and super shiny, you know, you gotta walk by it every day. Every time you wash it, every time you drive it, you see it and you're like, man, I wish I would've spent a day or two or whatever you know, getting that better. And uh, then you kind of have, you know, regrets over it. So I learned don't have regrets, especially on your own car and especially on the driver's side. Now, if this had been on the passenger side, I probably wouldn't have seen it so much because I'm not going to be a passenger in Ruby. I'm going to be a driver. So uh, I'm, every time I get walked up to the car to get in, I would have saw that mismatch and would have drove me crazy. So I'm glad I put in the long day to get this fixed. So thanks for joining me here at Foothill Paint Fabrication. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already. Mash that bell and drop me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you on the next one.